One of the great mysteries in cosmology is why the universe is mostly matter and not antimatter. If you want to learn more about that specific subject, you can click here and watch an episode all about that. But during the Big Bang, nearly equal amounts of matter and antimatter were created and subsequently annihilated. Nearly equal. And so we're left with a universe made of matter. But could there be antimatter stars out there with antimatter planets in orbit? Could there be a backwards universe that operates just like a regular universe, but everything's made of antimatter? And if it's out there, does it have to be evil? Do they only know how to conquer? Does everyone, even the antimatter babies and ladies, have handsome goatees? How about sashes? I hear they're big on sashes. Oh, and daggers, gold daggers with little teensy antimatter emeralds and rubies. Antimatter without the goatee was theorized in 1928 by Paul Dirac, who realized that one implication of quantum physics was that you could get electrons that had a positive charge instead of a negative charge. Now they were discovered by Carl D. Anderson just four years later, which he named positron for positive electron. Now we believe he was clearly snubbing Dirac by not naming them Diracatron. Alternatively, they were saving that name for a giant Japanese robot. Now these antiparticles are created through high energy particle collisions happening naturally in our universe, or unnaturally inside our laugh in the face of God and nature particle accelerators. We can even detect the annihilations out there in the universe where matter and antimatter crash into each other. Physicists have discovered a range of antiparticles, antiprotons, antineutrons, antihydrogen, antihelium. To date, there's been no evidence of any goatees or sashes. But naturally, they wondered what might happen if the balance of the universe was flipped. What if we had a universe made out of mostly antimatter? Would it still, you know, work? Could you have antimatter stars, antimatter planets, and even those antimatter people we mentioned? When physicists swap out matter for antimatter in their equations, they call it charge conjugation. It turns out, no. If you reverse the charge of all the particles in the universe, it wouldn't evolve in the same way as our plain old non-sashed universe. So to fix this problem, physicists considered the implications of if you had an actual mirror universe, where all the particles behaved as if they were mirror images of themselves. This sounds a little more in line with a through a mirror darkly goatee and sash everyday festival universe. This is all the bits backwards, spin, charge, velocity, the works. And they call this parity inversion. So would this work? Again, it turns out that the answer is no. It would almost work. But there's a tendency for the weak nuclear force, the one that governs nuclear decay, to violate this idea of parity inversion. Even in a mirror universe, the weak nuclear force is left-handed. Damn it, weak nuclear force, get your act together. If not just for the sake of the costumes and the cooler bridge lighting. So what if you reverse both the charge and the parity at the same time? What if you had antimatter in a mirror universe? So physicists call this charge parity symmetry, or CP symmetry. In a dazzling experiment, an absolute what-if one-upmanship exercise by James Cronin and Val Fitch in 1964, they demonstrated that no, you can't have a mirror antimatter universe evolve with our physical laws. This experiment won the Nobel Prize in 1980. Physicists had one last trick up their sleeves. It turns out that if you reverse time itself, as well as making everything out of antimatter and holding it up to a mirror, you get true symmetry. All the physical laws are preserved, and you get a universe that would look exactly like our own. It turns out we could live in a mirror universe as long as you were willing to reverse the charge of every particle and run time backwards. And if you did, it would be indistinguishable from the universe we actually live in. Now, if excuse me, I think I need to call my tailor. I hear sashes are gonna be huge this year. So what do you think? Do we live in the real universe or the mirror universe? Tell us in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Never miss an episode by clicking subscribe. Our Patreon community is the reason these shows happen, and we'd like to thank Bill Hodges and the rest of the members who support us in making great space and astronomy content. 
Members get advanced access to episodes, extras, contests, and other shenanigans with Jay, myself, and the rest of the team. Want to get on the action? Click here. Does everyone, even the antimatter babies and ladies? Ah. <laughs> oh.